Don't be intimidated. All right. Welcome back to Issues and Interviews with Kieran Michael Lawler on the Hudson Power Broker channel. We are joined by Republican strategist Phil Oliva. Good morning, Phil. How are you? Good, Kieran. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, I think uh, millions and millions of people watched the presidential debate, the first debate last night from the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. Uh, your thoughts on how everything went down last night? Yeah, I think it was painful to watch, actually. It wasn't uh, the Lincoln-Douglas debates. You know, it's been like this for a while, I think. I've been watching debates for a long time, and it's it, a lot of it's theater and you know, they've kind of devolved into these uh, shout fests. But last night, I think, really took the cake. And, uh, you know, I can't say I was proud about it. But, you know, if you watch the, you know, in, in Britain, uh, in the parliament, how they scream at each other and some places around the country, they, they fight each other on the legislative floor. So, you know, we're not the only ones, but uh, I would have liked to have a better moderation and more discussion of the issues. That's overall as far as what I thought uh you know overall in general did trump help himself or hurt himself or neither i don't think he helped himself i think um you know it was frustrating to me because he missed a lot of opportunities there's just one that stands out to me when you know trump talks about how he's done more for the black community than anybody since lincoln lincoln i mean you can make arguments with grant and truman and others but I would argue that uh, President Trump has done a lot more than anybody in, in recent times. I mean, he really has an excellent record. When they asked him about it, he 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 jumped in. He wanted to talk first step back. Then he started talking about letting people out of jail. And then he talked about he pivoted to Biden's crime bill and calling black people super predators. And he just kind of got off tangent when he should have talked about the first step back opportunity zones, record employment, record unemployment among black Americans record funding of uh, historical black colleges and universities, uh, you know, endorsements that he has and his focus. Uh, and he missed an opportunity. He missed opportunities to speak about his excellent record on the economy. I don't think he had the specifics. He came in with a specific game plan. I don't think it worked. Uh, the Hunter Biden uh, focus, I think, kind of fell flat. Uh, maybe, you know, people, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there with Hunter Biden, but he focused on it. Uh, to the detriment of Towton, which is a very good record. I mean, his foreign policy record is very strong. His economic record is very strong. Biden's talking about the Trump recession. I don't think the president uh, rebutted that. I mean, the fact is, I mean, he touched on it at one point, but the Obama-Biden recovery was the weakest in history, and it was it was limping along. And, and the Trump deregulation, the tax cuts, uh, open up energy independence, it's re it really... Uh, you know, led to an economic boom. And frankly, whether we have a V-shaped curve or not, but we're coming back a lot sooner uh, due to the, you know, from the uh, economic lockdowns from the pandemic. And I don't think Trump talked about that stuff. And overall, I don't think his style appealed to, frankly, who the audience was, you know, suburban women. I think, you know, a lot of them probably like what he's, some of the stuff he's done, but they don't like his personality. It's not for everybody. And they don't like cities burning. They don't like police being attacked. Uh, last night, though, they just reminded why they didn't like this guy's personality. Yeah, it was definitely uh, it was definitely Trump being Trump. And uh, what's interesting was I read, and I'm sure you read, that the people preparing him for the debate were Chris Christie, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, and Rudy Giuliani. And that's kind of interesting because, first of all, whoever prepares him, Trump's still going to do what he wants to do. But they're all basically the same guy. Rudy is the same kind of a guy as Trump. Chris Christie is basically a poor man's Trump. He's a less he's a less rich version of Trump. I wonder if they would have been better served. I remember reading first time I ever read the name Elise Stefanik. I think she played Obama in the preparation with a, with Romney uh, a couple years ago when when that was the was the race. I wonder if they would have been better served with somebody like that uh, as part of their debate team. Yeah, fair point. I. I you know, I have my problems with Chris Christie, but he was excellent in debates. And I'm a big fan of Rudy Giuliani as a native New Yorker. He, you know, certainly saved the city, turned it around. And I mentioned it to you previously, his book, Leadership, he he talked about preparation. He would prepare so much and know the, the subject matter so well that he would never need to read a speech. I think the problem is, and you kind of touched on it, whether it's Rudy Giuliani, Lily Stefanik, or, uh, you know, the late William F. Buckley, 
Trump is Trump, and there's only so much preparation he's going to do, which is not which, which is minimal. He knows who he is and what he wants to do. I I don't mind the fighting spirit. I do think uh, you know McCain, Romney, Bush, they all played the nice guy and they got killed for it. Uh, you know we're not going to get a fair shake by the media by the left. So I don't mind the fight. But sometimes, you know, the best fighters need to know when to hold their punch and need to know when to deliver it in a precise way. He was just flailing last night. I don't think it worked. I, I hopefully he can improve in round two. Um, I, you know, I think I told you one time. His late brother once told me. Uh, my brother, you know, he kind of like was touching on. You know, there's no one really can talk to his brother, but his brother doesn't want to be embarrassed, and his brother wants to win. So. Hopefully today, today is a day where a real leader is surrounded by people who care about them enough to tell them the truth. And I, I hope that he has that and he listens to it. Uh, having sycophants, fanboys and groupies isn't going to help him saying, oh, Mr. President, you did so great last night. He didn't do great last night. I do think he's the better candidate. He has a record worthy of reelection. But as you know, Karen, uh, so much of this is perception and and. Um, appearance and theater. You know, in 1960, people who listened to the Nixon-Kennedy debate on the radio said Nixon won, but people who watched it on TV said Kennedy won. So the president needs to keep that in mind. And I think that um, he needs to do better in the second debate because I don't think he served himself last night. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. And I don't think it's a 3D or 4D chess by Trump, but Trump tends to get things right. I think it's just his gut is good his instincts are good you know they said if you pull out of syria the world's gonna yeah. explode all the kurds are gonna get killed didn't happen move the capital to jerusalem the world's gonna explode if you don't bring the palestinians into the peace process you'll never get peace the the establishment has been wrong on everything um and i wonder if trump's style which is his style and whether this is by design or not laid the seeds for a lot of issues that are going to come up in the final month i don't think the average person knows because this just came out last week and the press really didn't cover it. Well, Hunter Biden got $3.5 million from the ma the wife of the mayor of Moscow. Well, you don't get to be the mayor of Moscow unless you're a Putin guy. All right. So he might as well have gotten the. Have to do that. But he did. Uh, uh, he did get that in there. And now that can be continued to be brought up. And I think those are the kinds of things that that he laid the seeds for, whether whether on purpose or not, that his hand, that his people, his supporters, his, his surrogates can bring up uh, for the next month and really get it out there because he brought it out there on the biggest stage. Yeah, I, I, there's definitely a lot there, and I think there's a lot of corruption there. I just think that he went in thinking that that was what he was going to do, and he stayed on it too, too long. I mean, you talk about low-information voters. People are just kind of maybe vote every four years what they might've heard was this guy's going after this guy's son. And, but there's a lot of corruption there. I mean, Hunter Biden isn't a great guy and there's a lot of stuff, but it's, it's always tough. I mean, even though he's 50 years old, he's still, you know, a family. He's not the candidate. I do think some of it is yeah, but fair they, game. They impeached the president over the Hunter Biden. Basically the president was impeached, which yeah. hurt his ability to govern, uh, may have even hurt the response to COVID. And yeah. it was, it was Hunter Biden was the uh, yeah. subject matter of that impeachment. I think I think it is fair game, but again, I think he, he stayed on it too long at the detriment of talking about his record, um, and it's an, it's unfair too because the media is not going to you know today all you hear about is Trump didn't uh, condemn white supremacists. I mean, I look around the country and it's just you know cities are on fire, police are being attacked, innocent people are being beaten up and killed. And what I see, it's uh, Antifa and the BLM organizations, Marxist and communist organizations. And they and it was brought up momentarily to Biden. And he said Antifa is an idea, not a group. And there was no follow up. And I and think that's a commercial. Told, huh? But that's kind of my point. Now, that's a commercial for the next month. Antifa is a myth. Well, Joe Biden yeah. saying it. And then you see the burning and the violence and people yeah. being beaten and them unloading shields and swords out of cars and things. I don't think uh, Joe Biden did so great last night, but the problem is I think the president uh, lowered the bar so much that if Joe Biden came out there and, and didn't uh, drool and didn't fall down and forget where he was, he was going to he was going to exceed expectations. So I think that was a, a, a tactical mistake on the on Trump's campaign's part. But but, you know, he had some bad moments, too. I mean, he kind of and I think that I think the uh, president interrupting him, I think he should have just left him because he would have stumbled a few times. 
But he, you know, let's not forget, uh, he called the president twice a clown, told him to shut up, called him an idiot. Um, he, he, you know, it's not just the one side. I think, I th- you think uh, Trump interrupted a lot more and he talked a lot more, but Biden wasn't innocent on this either. And I don't think he was particularly strong, but, you know, the incumbent's the one who's really on, on trial here, so to speak. discipline. And uh, I don't think Chris Rollins was great, but at the same time, you know, there was, there was moments where the president kind of just kind of uh, held back a little bit. He should have done that a little bit more, should have been more forceful with his points. Like you were bringing up, Karen, with uh, Jerusalem and the Middle East. I mean, just two issues alone, the economy and foreign policy are enough for the president to be reelected, not even to talk about the courts or border security or, or all the other stuff. The economy was was tremendous and it's coming back despite all the economic lockdowns in all these states and the foreign policy was something i didn't even see happening i mean people thought we'd get in all these wars he is he is very risk he was very averse to get into foreign entanglements and he's creating peace and he's been nominated three times for nobel peace prize (laughs) he has an excellent record and instead of like focusing so much on hunter Biden, which i think is a legitimate issue and should be pursued he did it once let it go, tout your record. I wish he had done that more. I wish he showed better temperament, I, frankly. I mean, you and I, I think he's fine. I'm, you know, I'm supporting him, but I'm looking, you know, I, I'm a strategist and I know who we need to win over. We need to win over the suburban moms who are with him on most of the issues, but they're uncomfortable with his style. And, and like I said before, uh, you know, Kennedy beat Nixon when people watched it, but on the radio, Nixon won. So style, unfortunately, in American politics is, I mean, look at look at President Obama. He he won twice, mostly on style. I don't think he was a particularly effective president. To be nice about it. Yeah, no, that's true. I think that is the the big hurdle that Trump has to overcome. He has a limit to his likability. Guys from New York like him. Most you know blue collar men uh, yep. like him, but he he does have some issues with women. But how how do you appeal to the suburban mom? What should he brought up to appeal to the suburban mom? Well, security is a big issue. You know, the schools, he touched on this a little bit, uh, but they, I think they just want somebody that they're not, you know, they, they're going to have dinner with and they don't feel like he's going to slam the table or talk over them. I mean, it's just really stylistic thing. Uh, I, you know, I, I think I think moms and suburban moms care about what most people care about. Public, they want their kids safe and secure in schools. They want to be able to afford their taxes. Um, they want peace in the world. I mean, Trump is really lined up on a lot of these issues uh, um, you know the, the democrats think it's all about abortion but I, I think it's more about affordability public safety uh, i think they know that trump has the record for it maybe seem superficial but it is a fact of life people want to vote for a person that they like um, i want to vote for the person who is going to advance the policies and principles that i think are best for the country and that's do you think the battleground state polls will change President it all? Trump. Oh, I'm sorry. Even though I don't always agree with his style. I don't know. I don't know. I think, but I do think there's some, I'll go back to the suburban women who are with him on the policies and the record, but they don't like the personality, but they are also don't like the attacks on police. They don't like the crime increasing. They don't like cities burning. But uh, last night they weren't reminded of that. They were reminded of the guy that, you know, constantly interrupts and um, is, is unfocused and undisciplined and a little bit too brash. Yeah, we're going to leave it right there. Phil Oliva, Republican strategist, analyst of the analysis of the debate from last night. Uh, we have the vice presidential debate coming up uh, a week from yesterday, I believe. Do you think uh, one last question, even though yeah. I said we we're wrapping up. Do you think that debate can move the needle uh, more than the typical VP debate because I of do. Biden's age and frailty? I, I do. And I actually think uh, Vice President Pence is everything that Donald Trump isn't. So it's actually a good match. So, good cop, bad cop. Yeah. And I think uh, I think Pence will be much, much better. Um, I think Kamala Harris is strong, too. But she she's the one who wants to get rid of private insurance. I mean, they missed that opportunity. But if you're prepared, you know, you could have when when like last night, there was a missed opportunity. Biden said, I don't want to get rid of private insurance. Well, your running mate said that she would. So how do you reconcile that? Uh, but I think it could move the needle and I think it could give people some reassurance that, you know, even if you don't like Trump, here's a guy who's his running mate 
who is everything that he's not. He's very, you know, his, his moral compass is incomparable. He's a, a good man. He's disciplined. He has great humility. And he's going to be good on the facts. And he's going to be good. He's not going to miss the opportunities that the president did. But the president is the fighter. And the president's getting a lot of the stuff done. But it has to come through better. And I think uh, the vice president can really help him. Yeah, all right. We'll stop right there. We'll have you back maybe after one of the other debates. Thanks for taking the time this morning. Phil Oliva. Thanks, Take man. care. All right.